Hi, I'm Jenny, Jenny Quickly Jones, the CEO of Digital Voices. Um, and I founded the company about, so it's coming up to seven years ago. So Digital Voices is a global leading award-winning influence marketing agency um, that runs campaigns for brands that drive growth. So whether that's like driving views and awareness of a product or sales or app downloads, we kind of cover all of that and approach it from a full funnel influence marketing approach. It was born very differently though. Um, so I used to work at YouTube as a strategic partner manager and my job was to help creators grow their channels on YouTube. And that was everything from like working with The Economist to working with like Ben Phillips, who was a Facebook prankster. It was hugely different every day. And I noticed over the two years there, brands were coming to us a lot and asking us how to partner with YouTube creators. Because at the time, influence marketing, if you think it's like the wild, wild west now, influence marketing then was chaos. There were like everyone was half managing talent and brand like agencies kind of existed. There was no structure for fees. Everyone was just running like Instagram campaigns. And so no one had the knowledge on how to work with YouTube creators. So I saw this gap in the market and decided that I wasn't learning anymore at Google. Like I think Google was a great place to meet wonderful people and to start my career. But it got to the stage where it was actually quite a big company. So it wasn't the PR dream that I think I was sold when I first joined. At the time, I told myself I had to quit when I had £10,000 in savings. I look back on that now and I'm like, how stupid was that? Ten grand is not going to get you through six months of living in London. So the month I had ten grand in savings, I handed my notice. I, while working for YouTube, went to speak at an event in Brussels. And on the train to Brussels, I was like, Jenny, for once, you're not going to talk to the person next to you on the train. You're going to read your book. You are going to not talk about work. You're going to just be chill. So I sat down on the train, knowing that I had this impending doom of leaving Google and no plan. And I got out my book and a guy sat next to me and he got out his laptop and he was all huffy. He was like obviously really annoyed about something. He was like, ah, he was typing and he got out the card of someone from Google and um, to get their email address and was like, ha, 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 typing really angrily. And I was like, Jenny, don't do it, don't do it. And I put down my book and I was like, do you need help from Google? And he went, yeah, no one is telling us how to grow organically on YouTube. He was like, I really, really need help as a brand. How do we grow on YouTube? And I was like, well, actually, that's kind of my job. And it turns out he was the VP of marketing for Starwood Hotels, which is now part of Marriott Bonvoy. And I just answered his questions on the train and we shared a taxi back. And he was like, next day, come into the office and um, meet some of the team. And I walked into a boardroom full of people just quizzing me on YouTube, 10 a.m. And it went well. And the next day, well, so as I left the meeting, he was like, right, I'm going to pay you to come and do a training for us in Brussels when you quit YouTube. And I was like, OK, well, first client. And he was like, what's your day rate? And I was like, I had no idea. Like, can you imagine if you've never worked on a day rate before, you've only worked in big big tech. So I was like, I don't know, 120? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He was like, 120 quid, you've just come out of Google. Like, I'd been to Harvard as well. I was like, you know, he was like, what the hell? So he went, okay, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna say your day rate is 300 pounds, I'm gonna pay you 10 days, including the prep plus your travel. So I worked out a training was about three grand. And that was how Digital Voices started. So I quit Google, I put 500 pounds into a business bank account so that I could serve that client. Um, I went to Brussels, got paid three grand, and then I just kept freelancing. So we did nine months of freelancing, and then I was like, oh, I hate freelancing. Like freelancing, you get to do a strategy or execution, you don't get to do both. And I really missed having a great team around me, because at Google you have really smart, great people you get to work with every day. So I decided nine months in, I was like, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna run an agency. So I hired people, and we started running campaigns for brands. And that now it is like, I still own 94% of the company. And we now have like, we're gonna end the year with 82 employees, offices in two countries, staff in four countries, run campaigns in 36. Like to get from that to this is, is all just like winging it, but in a, you make decisions and you stick to them way. Have you ever faced any hurdles, you think because of your gender in this space? There are so many parts of 
being a female boss that I think are, I would not trade for the bad parts. Getting to work with people in an empathetic and openly communicative way. There are so many female clients we have that are phenomenal. There are male, male clients we have that are phenomenal. I feel really lucky to be one of the few diverse leaders at the forefront of this industry. And in the UK, it's pretty much, it's depressing. It should not be this way. But if you look at who's actively running influencer agencies that are doing really well in the UK, like of a significant size, one other female founder just stepped down. The founder of Fanbytes, Tim Amu, who I love as well, he just, he sold and then stepped away to do other projects. So it is me at the top, which is really interesting. It's a lot of pressure. There are so many good things that come from that. People often go, oh, is it your company? And I'm like, yep. And then the, the first question after that used to be, how many employees have you got? And I'd be like, seven? I don't know. Now it's like 80, they don't really ask. There is a real difference with the US, and the US expansion in the last year and a half has made me see this quite differently. In the US, there are a lot of female-led businesses or people of color-led businesses at the top of the industry. It's not so much the case in the UK. But also, brands are incentivized to work with those companies. So we've just joined WeConnect, which is about a network of female-led businesses that helps you match up with procurement because Brands want to diversify their supplier list because then they know they're building businesses run by a diverse spectrum of people who reflect their customer base. I'd say in the UK until the last, like, literally, that hasn't been a discussion. Whereas in the US, they have specialist like access programs if you're a veteran who's founded a business, if you're like a person of color who's founded a business, if you're a, a woman. And so like the incentive is there for brands structurally. And I didn't realize how important that is and how much we're lacking that here until I left. And the budgets you're pitching for in the US are stronger. The ecosystem and like level of respect for founders is stronger. I think it's just made me kind of more aware of some of the inequalities in the UK and some of the ways we don't strategically set diverse entrepreneurs up for success. Talking about influence marketing in general, why do you think it's such a strong channel? So everyone's heard about how much influence marketing is growing. So the industry is predicted to be worth $480 billion by 2027, and that's up from like $250 billion today. So everyone gets excited about a sexy industry that's growing really quickly. The thing I find inspiring about it, and the reason that I sleep happy every, every night running an influencer agency, is because out of every dollar spent with us, we distribute about 70% of that to influencers. So we democratize the media buying process. So instead of spending all those, that, all that dollars just on Meta or just on Google, it's going to all these small entrepreneurs who are either like providing for their family or being an example to their family of like how you can flexibly work and create content and that be a business or people who are building their own businesses and hiring editors. We're democratizing what the future of entrepreneurship looks like. And how many people in their life can ever say that they get to choose to do that? Like that they get to do something in their job every day that creates businesses that would not exist without you. Even if you think about, as well, from a diversity and inclusion perspective, for at least 25% of our shortlists, so of when we work with brands, we shortlist creators, and at least 25% of the creators on that shortlist will be diverse in some way, whether that's disability, gender, religion, race, ethnicity. Think about it, you're not just building businesses, you are supporting businesses from diverse entrepreneurs who otherwise would not have that money. So I love the fact that every day, I can see where our money goes. And it goes all around the world, people who are like aspiring to build something better for themselves and aspiring to change the way we see success and change the way we see entrepreneurship. And so yes, it's a great, fast growing, sexy industry, but fundamentally, I'm so fucking proud of the way we work because we literally shape what the future of entrepreneurship is. From your <laughs> point of view, why do you think it's so important for brands to invest in influence <clears throat> marketing? There are three main reasons brands should invest in influence marketing. The first and most fundamental is that social media is where everyone spends their time. So on average, people spend two hours and 31 minutes a day on social. It's not going away. When they're on social, they're watching content creators. Whether that's short form video, long form video, that's what they're doing. So for brands to really get in front of their target customers, they have to be on social and partnering with influencers is the best way to break through to those target customers and to that audience. The second thing about working with influencers is, I've said it again, I'm gonna keep saying it till I'm blue in the face, is inclusive marketing. 
So when you work with a vast range of influencers, you can access a lot of different communities that resonate with your target customer at once. That could be, I mean, that community could be Dungeons and Dragons fans. That community could be car fans. It could be black hair care fans. Like it could be anyone who's interested in a topic. And I think when you look at traditional media, you have very few brand assets you use, right? So you'll use, you'll do a big shoot for a TV commercial and you'll use a couple of people in that, but you don't create loads and loads of different versions of the same TV commercial. With influencer marketing, you can have different calls to action, different talking points, different people representing you from all of these communities. You can speak to hundreds of communities at once, and that is possible to make look effortlessly diverse. But you really, really need to lean into it, this like grassroots community way of doing influencer marketing. And that inspires diverse groups of customers to become loyal to your brand. So that's the second point. That's super important. It is like a way that you can innately have inclusive marketing campaigns. And the third thing that's really important is that influencers can be used at, throughout the funnel of the customer journey. So um, one of the things we do differently at Digital Voices is we think about growth at each stage. So if we're looking for a brand awareness campaign, we guarantee results. So we'll guarantee views. So in that sense, like influence can be used to raise mass awareness. If you look at conversion, we can attribute and track the impact of influencers who drive sales. So at that stage, they can be used in paid ads, they can be posting organically to drive sales, they can be used in, um, you can even integrate into influencer newsletters. Like there's so much that you can do to drive conversions with influencers.